Hello. Um, the mic's on. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you for uh, the invitation to be here. It's a, it's a huge honor uh, to be invited by the Hatwia uh, of all the nations. Uh, before I get started, I want to pay respect to uh, Cloquit for for hosting today and in, inviting us and in, in, uh, recognize the, their traditional territory. And I, I want to recognize also the, how grateful I am uh, to each of you and for uh, the endorsement. And I, I want to thank you uh, for the endorsement during the election and your strength that you lent me uh, during a really tough battle, a very difficult election, as we know, and a very important election. Um, it was that strength and uh, that, that uh, helped lifted us uh, to rise above a government that had set target on Aboriginal people, on people that needed a lift, that created more inequality and more pain than any government I think that I can think of in my lifetime. And having your strength made a huge difference for me on the campaign trail and making sure that I could share some of your story and having lived in Cloquit territory for the last 23 years, I've been a witness to a, a lot of the suffering and the struggle as a result of decisions of governments of the past. So I'm honored to be your member of parliament to finally get here today. I've been wanting to come to thank the Hatwia for their support. Um, it's been a difficult schedule in Ottawa, but I, I'm really honoured to be here today to, to listen to you, to talk about the issues that we've been bringing forward in Ottawa on your behalf and will continue to. And I, I'm really honoured to be here with my friend Romeo Saganash, uh, who's, uh, who's come a long way today. He came from uh, Gatineau and, uh, and so he, he left early this morning, 1 a.m. Pacific time to join us, to join your meeting, to, to hear from you and to share his, uh, his story and to share his passion to uh, move forward a bill to enshrine the UN Declaration of Rights for Indigenous Peoples into law. Um, we've been told that uh, we have an hour, is that right? Uh, just to confirm with the chair, yeah. And uh, so maybe I'll just say a few things about what I've been working on and maybe take some questions and then I'll turn it over to Romeo and introduce Romeo if that's, uh, if that's the will of the hot we are. Okay? Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I heard loud and clear during the campaign the importance of uh, the, the implementation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission findings. Um, I heard loud and clear about the importance of settling the, uh, the court case, the fisheries court case, the right to catch and sell fish. And um, I heard loud and clear about coastal response, emergency response. These are issues that, that were prevalent. Certainly, maybe the issues that weren't talked about a lot, but they're, they're facing all of us, youth mental health, um, extreme poverty, and uh, transportation needs, you know, they're all very important and Aboriginal health. In, in the short period of time, in the eight months since the election, um, I've worked uh, closely with some of you here, some of the people in your communities and some of the elected leaders um, on these issues to start to move forward to make sure that the government is hearing loud and clear the importance of settling these issues, of following through their, with their promises to Aboriginal people, especially the promise to, to take things away from the courts and settle uh, issues around Aboriginal rights at the table where, they, where they, uh, they made this promise. It's been eight months, almost nine months now, uh, since the election. And we're frustrated that the government hasn't come to the table and, and followed through with that promise. So uh, about a week and a half ago, I had an opportunity to, to uh, bring up a question to the government 
on, on the issue related to the court case for the fisheries uh, court case and um, it was the first time in 10 years that it had been asked in question period where we got to finally ask the government the question in the House of Commons and it gave us an opportunity for us to, to put it down that this is important to all people of our region to all Aboriginal people, but to all people on the West Coast. Reconciliation, shared prosperity. If we're gonna move forward, this is a very important step for the people of the West Coast, and I, I, I really uh, hear that loud and clear from the people that have supported me and helped me with understanding with their, their wisdom, and, and I do, I am very grateful for the knowledge and uh, the wisdom that many of you have provided me not just over the last eight months, but over the last 23 years I've been here, I've, I've learned a lot. And, uh, and I try to carry those values in that respect. And I, I hold the teachings very delicately that you've shared with me and the importance of it. And I bring that every day. And, you know, I tell a story about the House of Commons starts. It's, uh, it's very different than being here at home, um, as you can imagine. And, they start the day with a, a bit of meditation, they call it, in time for self-reflection. And, and I start the day, um, I start usually in Heshkwit and I travel through the Hahutlis of all the nations and, and, uh, and I think of people in our communities, in, the, in, in, in all of our communities, so that I know when, when I open my eyes and when we start the day why I'm there and, and the importance of the message and being connected to the people that I represent. So, I'm going to count on you to continue to remind me why I'm there, to share your wisdom, your advice, strategies on how we can be heard. We're very strong if we're together when we, when we move forward and, uh, and we bring these issues to government. In fact, I, I, I know that as one, we, we, we will be heard. But uh, if we're not as one, we won't be. It won't be as strong. So. I, I look forward to the coming three and a half years or three and a bit more years in this term of working closely with you so our voice can be heard together, so I can carry the voice of the hot we are to Ottawa together with you and stand together on these issues. So maybe I'll just open it up uh, to take questions if that's appropriate. Chu. Let go, thank you. <clears throat> Microphone 11, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johns, for, for being here today. And want to acknowledge you for the work that you're doing on behalf of First Nations people. Um, want to uh, express um, concerns of the things that you've been talking about in, in the legislation, Takwiak Fisheries. But I ask you to pass a message on to, to the leadership of Canada that we will, we will never, we will, we will no longer be used as media tokens. Being looked at when tragedy happens, being used as, as, as a vote, being used as, as a, a, a crappy example for them to use us. We're tired of being used. So that they can get their approval from from other, other uh, Canadian citizens. I think it's sad that uh, you get the Premier coming here, you get other people to come here when tragedy happens. It's the only time they'll show up. I'm glad that you can take the time to come and sit with us, to, 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 to learn, to, to ask what more or how, how much more you can learn from us. Or what, or what we can teach you to, to advocate on our behalf. And we're grateful for that. And my Thai wants to know if, if, you, if you learn how to speak French now. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, we, you know, I think it's, it's important that, that they hear us. That, that, and that's the only time we see them. 
our premier lied to, to our people on TV. She said there was going to be big changes right away. How many later, just about a year later, we haven't really seen, we've heard of, of uh, training and stuff. But uh, it, it's, it's sad to know that there's very little movement on a lot of those actions. It took, uh, it took uh, my, my, my older brother Cliff uses as an example for a fishery to change their policies within 48 hours because they were taken to court in the provincial court. And it's taken us so many years to, to make movement in our Takuyak fishery. Is it because of our skin color or what? Are we being still continued to be deprived of our, our ownership and our resources that we have? We're, we're, we're being overshadowed by that privilege. The privilege has more right than what we have the responsibility to look after. We've never taken in more than we needed. So I, I just wanted to say thank you uh, on behalf of how is it? You say something. And uh, my Thai wants to speak. To Thank you, uh, Gord. The reason I'm asking you about learning the French language is that four years from now, I would like to see you as as uh, one of the people from the NDP, as, as I am an MB NDP member, to run for the leadership of the NDP because we need somebody like you that understands us and comes to see us and and you know you told me when i talked to you that you would you would uh, present that in the house of commons what i was asking you to do and you did and the way the government answered this liberal government i was i was telling you they just pushed it under the carpet what you said but i just want to say to you gord you have my vote when it comes to it when uh, when uh, there's a leadership uh, campaign i know you're just into it but that's what we need is people like you that are, that are coming to us to, uh, um, to ask what it is that we're looking for. And that's what we're looking for is people that are, are going to listen to us and move on what it is that we're going to say instead of scrubbing everything under the carpet. True. It's good to see you home, Gord. It's good to see you home. True. Klecko, Klecko. Thank you, McQuinna. Uh, any response, Gord? Um, Microphone two, please. I, I don't know French yet. Uh, I'm going to study French next month, not necessarily to be uh, the leader, but uh, to ensure that I can understand and share the knowledge that I need to learn from my colleagues from Quebec so that we can speak the same language. And so that uh, it, I'm doing what I'm doing here at home. I need to listen and learn like our friend just talked about. And I have a lot to learn from you. But together, you know, by learning each other's language, maybe not speaking it sometimes, but learning it, learning to learn, learn from each other, maybe it's not in words, but in action sometimes. I will do everything I can to try to make sure that our message is a shared message, and I understand your message, and I appreciate your, your support. It means a lot to me, and, uh, and I think about you every day, the support that you've lent me, and, and how important that is and uh, thank you Klecko. Klecko, thank you microphone one please Jim see X two part Julia Lucas wife of dr. Simon Lucas mother of Mamie George my my goal in my life is our language we apply for monies all over, we get turned down. Many times, me and my husband, we do it for nothing, teaching our language. You know, they give us coffee and maybe a donut. But um, we need our own place. We're struggling going from place to place. Sometimes the place is packed and we don't have enough room to take all the people in it when they come and do a language, learning at least some of our language. So I will ask that because our language is, one tribe hasn't even got one speaker now in their tribe. 
Heshko tribe has six speakers. Our language is really important to me. Many words we can't translate into English because of the full depth meaning of our new channel words. I will ask many of our teaching system stories to our children. If a child is, um, if a youth is help, really helpful to you, you say, Jemata, it's ka you have been taught well by your parents or grandparents. It's what we say to them. We acknowledge the parents and grandparents of bringing that youth up to be helpful to you. We need to revive our language. It's very critical now. We need to do it very soon. I want to take a moment on behalf of our hotware to welcome home uh, two friends, not one. Uh, Tomahawk, it's so good to see you. And uh, we're glad that you're back home uh, and reaching out and listening. I think that that's a, a very important trait to have is, is not to just listen but hear. Tupac raises a very important issue that we have to do follow up with the federal government, hold them accountable to, is our language. Is the, the Nuchanov language is, is being rarely used by generations such as mine and below mine, those that followed me. It's a rarity that we use the language other than to introduce who we are by name and that's the extent of it that needs to change. And we hope that by extension you become our voice in Ottawa as you did on the fishing case. We appreciate that you did that. We're very disappointed as well in the non-response that you got on the floor, which is typical of government. We're not surprised. It doesn't matter if it's conservative or liberal. Unfortunately, we're getting the same non-response on how they're dealing with the recognition and more importantly, the implementation of our right to catch and sell fish. So we hope you continue that and we look forward to trying to be of assistance with you to be our voice back in Ottawa because that voice has been gone for 10 years or more. So we want to acknowledge you for doing that. Uh, not only on that as well as the, the tragedy that happened in recognizing the contribution that the nations played, uh, how is it, Lohokwit and others that played in responding in a very timely manner. We just had a presentation from oil spill. You know, it's our nations and our people know the area the best and they're not constrained or they're not confined by regulation or guideline that says you need permission by this hierarchy in order to get out there and pluck people out of the water. They didn't. All it took is Tlaukut and Tlaukut saying, get out there. And they were out there. So we appreciate you recognizing that as well. Um, sounds funny calling you Gordon. I'm not going to call you Gord or Mr. John. It's Tomahawk. Tomahawk for some of you, and that's why we're so endeared to you. My late sister played slow pitch, and Tomahawk had his own team called Fiber Options, and she gave him that nickname only by virtue of the way he swung the bat. He swung it like a Tomahawk, so she said, hey, Tomahawk. And that name has stuck with him, and it means, we don't mean it in any disparaging way, it, it means a lot to me because my sister, I know my sister would yell across the field. If you're familiar with the field behind Wick and Inish, her voice can carry, hey, Tomahawk. Mm -hmm. And so I think that uh, that means a lot doing what you're doing. We wish you all the best in what you do and we'll help you in any way we can. Another dear friend came here in 1993, 94, uh, with the with the godfather of my son, a dear friend of mine, Robert Kennedy Jr. From Gatineau, Quebec, Romeo Saganash came to support the five nations, the Central Region First Nations in fighting Klaikwit Sound. And we want to acknowledge you for that, Romeo. We ask that you stand. We want to recognize you on behalf of our hot <clears throat> Thank you.
that that means a lot to our way of how you came all the way across country to to help support our 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 hereditary chiefs at the time. So I ask Nakwimalni uh, and and Nukmes and Muchening to stand with me. We have a presentation, Romeo, we want to make to you. We've never had that opportunity since uh, when we negotiated the first intermeasures agreement in British Columbia in 94, 95, that recognized the role of our hotware and how they were gonna protect the resources. We never ever had that opportunity to acknowledge your contribution to waking up the eyes of the provincial government at the time. And sorry, Gord, they were in DP. But at the time, they made a decision that we didn't agree with. But with your support with Bobby Kennedy and Tomahawk, I know Tomahawk stood with our leaders in saying we need to change the decision that was made in 1993. On behalf of our hotware, we have a gift here that we'd like to present to you. You can just stay there. That we'd like to present you in recognition and in honor of your contribution to helping fight the cause of our, our, our First Nation people as you do for your own back in Quebec. And as we know now, Tomahawk is doing. Tomahawk is fulfilling the role that our dear friend Bobby Kennedy did for you and I in our days. And so we wanted to do this. It's a long time coming. We haven't had the opportunity until now. Uh, when I heard the name Saganash, I knew right away it was you that did come back in 1993 to help us fight the fight that we were fighting in recognition of our hotware and who they stand for. Chu, so we'd like to present this to you. Gleko, gleko, tlokuit. Microphone 15, please. Thank you, Chu uh, Uklama Wamish. Uh, thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Romeo, for coming. It's good to see you again. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Cliff and uh, myself and Don had an opportunity to sit with Romeo. Actually, when you first talked about entering this private member's bill, um, and I know um, I'm sure all the nations will take back the motion uh, to try to get these drafted as BCRs in our communities or other forms, and this table as well, adopting the work that you're doing. and. Uh, Deb and I will be bringing it to our board of directors to try to get our full support from our board of directors as well. I uh, just want to thank Gord uh, publicly. Uh, as Atlio said, it's nice to have a voice in Ottawa. Um, seeing you stand up and talk about New Channel people in the house is amazing, and it's inspiring to know that yeah, you're putting our people's lives at the forefront, uh, that, that our people matter within your riding, and uh, it means a lot to me. And for those of you who don't know, Gord's riding of Alberni Courtney was one of the top three voter turnout in all of British Columbia. Uh, or top three or five, I think. Uh, in all of British Columbia, that means so many of our people turned out that, including our own New Channels people, that uh, Gord won. Uh, and we, I think we, you know, we contributed to you being there, but you did it on your own too. I think you need to take ownership that it's because of the person you are that the Hotway stood up formally and uh, endorsed you as well. But I just want to share with you, Atlio and Kisa talked a bit about their frustration in terms of the Five Nations. Um, I want you to know that uh, we've asked the Assembly of First Nations National Chief, our Provincial Leadership Council, we've asked everybody and anybody to get a meeting with ministers in Ottawa. Um, and I know you've told me personally that uh, you've been tracking down our Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould, the Attorney General of Canada, every chance you get in Ottawa. And uh, it's with great excitement to let you know, uh, I haven't had a chance to tell you, but we're, we're meeting with three ministers, three ministers next week. And it's because of the pressure that you've put on to say that New Channels people matter. 
and that the rights of the five nations need to be negotiated and she needs to quit wasting taxpayers' dollars in the courts. Um, they made a commitment through their mandate letter to look at all appeals that contradict the rights of um, the, the Constitution and others, and I, I just want to acknowledge you in front of everybody. Uh, you might not have known it yet, but that's, that meeting's happening next week with Minister Bennett of Indigenous Affairs, uh, the Interim Fisheries Minister LeBlanc, and uh, our Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould. And it's because of people like Gord that continue to put the pressure on in support of new channels. Uh, so hopefully next week we can, we can pray and get all of our people's energy over with us that attend Ottawa and seek some change for the Five Nations of their negotiations. So uh, once again, not just on behalf of the Five Nations or all the new channels in the room, I think our citizens, more importantly, Gord, um, it's great to have a voice in Ottawa. And uh, thank you for all your support on behalf of the Tribal Council. Chu, klako, klako. Chu, klako, klako, wamish. Microphone, tsawak. Chu, we can initial classes, takshit ahoset. Na ama sapsi wa utsuni kayatuksen. Yakin ku maesu umheku kuotsa. Yeah, Miss Mahsapna, he shook. Quiet, at you. I had a better second. Woods Hansi wa. Ups cheek it wa wa, woods when you clocken. Whip mark the wick, yeah, Miss Up Cocorta. Oh, Tecna, and oh, eh. Oh, Tecna, we keep it that we caput massa. How quiet me, how is it me? Unnaku iyamis ko kote. Wai atiakt ko yatikit ha oya si wa kwaet kwa pakta wai atiakt lo tsuwe ni kwaet kwa ha kwa na ata. Koyatu Kniwa how he needs na up your government in Ayakni Shukna Chakasiwa Oh what hak miss My name is Weekin Inish from Ahausit and I wanted you to hear there's only a handful of our people that can speak. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't know in our language. I, I admit that. And there's fewer and fewer every year that know these things. And we're saying that it's important for us to hang on to that. It's important to be recognized that as a makeup of defining what reconciliation is. Without it, we're just one of English folks. No, we want our identity. My father said that. Two things. He said, yeah, Mr. Pumkokoza and oh apatna koza. He said, you hang on to that language. Because that's our identity as a people. Yeah, Mr. Pum Hot was missing oh his wiknani wakukwis, he said. You hang on to hereditary system because that's not a man-made institution. That's a gift from the Creator to look after the land and resources and the people. So I wanted to stress how important language is because it, it, it's a known, studied fact and a reality that it prevents suicide attempts by those who hang on to that knowledge. It's a known fact. And we're on this path of wellness and health, and the cornerstone has to be resources put toward hanging on to that language. Serious resources, not token little bits that you can apply for once every five years. To me, it's criminal for the government of Canada to ignore that reality of how important it is for us to hang on to who we are as a people. 
criminal. Do not even recognize it as education. Do not even connect the dots in terms of what it means when they say we accept reconciliation recommendations. So <clears throat> I think we wanted to formally thank you in our language for standing up for our people, bringing our message to the government, making sure that they toe the line, making sure that they pay attention to the interests of our people. Because in my short lifetime, I saw proud independent people where we did not need government handouts, where we did not, we didn't need housing programs. Why? Because we went out there, we earned the money, and we built our own homes. Not that long ago. So uh, we, I said, utilize the power in this room for delivering your message. Understand that there is power here. And uh, attack, attack that framework agreement that protects the share of commercial and sporties. Our court case doesn't mean anything as long as that order in council sits and approved and is hung on to by the cabinet, no matter which government put it in place. Our hands are tied as long as that order and council is in place. So we want to wish you well, and we send all of our power here in this room from our hot wheel with you when you deliver our message. No one understand that when you stand up and speak on our behalf. Chu. Ooh, Tleko Wikinanish. Okay. Uh, we got 35 minutes left. Are, are you done? Maybe I'll just... Microphone words. two, please. I'm, I'll say a few words before I turn it over to Romeo and introduce my friend as well. Um, Ken, I want to thank you for your words. And, and Ken's been bringing all the communities together, and he's probably kept you informed to tackle poverty and, and working together. And Ken, you're doing incredible work with Deb and, and bringing us together so that we can find ways to work together in all levels of government and community organizations and citizens. and. Ken, Ken is doing an incredible job on trying to find ways to pull us together to share our experiences and, and look at ways we can work together. And uh, I really appreciate the, that uh, the, about language revitalization and the importance of that. Um, I, I find it really humbling to be here and, and ironic because I know you're thanking me, but. I actually feel like I want to thank you. Uh, 23 years of living here and the gift of uh, sharing of the food and this beautiful place with my children. And, you know, my son, when he opened a book and he was in kindergarten, he pointed at a whale and he said, Kakawin. And what that meant to me by you sharing your language with, with my son. You know, it's, uh, it's me that thanks you. I'm very grateful. Um, it was the first time I heard about the meeting because the Minister of Justice had promised about that meeting several times in the hallways of the House of Commons when I went to tell her about the, the late, uh, losing the late uh, Nelson Keatla and, uh, and sharing that message with her and, and her, her sorrow and sadness to hear about his loss and that she, she later came back and again reminded me that she would fulfill that promise to me that, to deliver that meeting and, uh, and the promise to you. Romeo and Charlie have been working very hard on the issues that you've brought today. Um, I'm very grateful to work alongside people with such commitment and conviction and experience. I have a lot to learn from them as well as you. Um, and, and I'll continue to learn from them as I carry the message to Ottawa on your behalf. I, just uh, yesterday I got off the phone with Jody Thomas, the Commissioner of Coast Guard, 
And she promised me too that she would be here on the West Coast this summer to come to the New Chalmath Nations, to look at ways of creating jobs and working in partnership to deliver coastal response and possibly even looking at some refitting and sh uh, shipbuilding jobs maybe in, in Port Alberni but, uh, and training programs on the coast. So she made that commitment to me yesterday. So I wanted to pass that on as well. So we can look forward to, to her coming and all of us together hosting her and showing uh, her the opportunity of learning from local people, local knowledge and what that brings. So just uh, before, before I turn it over to Romeo again, I, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Klecko.